What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to Football Manager 2017 and episode 2 of our Spurs Let's Play. Today we are going to be taking on Chelsea at home again, another massive tie for us in the Premier League. Going to be a real challenge but before we do that of course we've got to recap what happened last time and talk about a few other little bits and pieces. So the first thing you may be noticing is everything is green. Uh, I decided to switch back to the kind of default, the new skin. Uh, in the last episode I was using Football Manager Dark but I feel like we should give the new green look a go. It looks quite nice. It's actually grown on me a little bit since I first started using it. So we're going to persevere with it, at least for now. Let me know though down in the comments, are you using the dark skin? Are you using the white skin? Or are you using the green skin? I feel, I like this one. It looks nice. Either way, uh, since the last episode, not only the skin has changed, we have played some football. Of course, the opening episode of this season was against Manchester City. Hopefully you enjoyed that first episode. The response was absolutely phenomenal. And a massive thank you to all you guys who are, of course, coming back here for episode two. And uh, yeah, as you can see, since then, we've actually played four matches, three in the Premier League, one in the Champions League. We'll start off with the league games in chronological order. The first game, a win against West Ham, of course. In our first game of the season, Danilo sent off at right back for us. In this game, Carl Walker. His replacement due to suspension, he decided to get sent off too. He got a straight red despite actually having already been booked. Uh, as a result, he actually got suspended for three matches for the foul he did in this game. Either way, we did get the one solitary goal in this game in a 1-0 win whilst down to 10 men. It was a good little goal, a little bit fortuitous perhaps, but Berahino, of course, record transfer, getting the goal. We are expecting a little bit of return of, on our investment with him. £30 million paid, of course. And, uh, well, he got a goal here, albeit for a bit of good fortune with this tackle, as you'll see here, uh, finding its way to him. But he slotted it away nicely. It was the difference maker. And uh, all in all, quite a nice little win down to 10 men uh, away from home at the London Stadium. And West Ham, well, they've not had the best start in real life. They've not had the best start in this save either, as we'll see when we move on to the league table. Anyway, the next game we had was against Everton. It was a 3-2 win. A game of two halves, really. The first half... It lacked action, it lacked goals. Fortunately, for the fans, I guess at least, it came into life in the second half. Uh, we got two goals through Vincent Janssen, um, I believe that's his first name. The Dutch player, of course, recently joined Spurs in real life. Uh, he came on off the bench in this game at half-time and he had an immediate impact. Six minutes in with this goal, take a bow, in off the post, squeezed in past Stecklenburg. Uh, a really nice goal for him there. Uh, the next goal that we got, got was a Christian Eriksen goal. Not a classic, but it was a nicely placed finish on his left uh, left peg on the half volley from Eric Dyer's header. Uh, that, however, was quickly responded to in the 61st minute. We were caught on the counter-attack, and who else but Dimitar Berbatov to get the goal. I mean, yes, Berbatov, he's made a free transfer move to the Merseyside club, and uh, he got a goal for them here alongside Lukaku, a player who at one point I was eyeing up during pre-season. Unfortunately, the asking price was a little too high for my liking, and, uh, well, I thought at one point in this game I was going to be regretting not picking him up because, as you can perhaps see here, immediately from the kickoff. Uh, we went up the other end and conceded again. This time, another counter-attack, really. Gareth Barry winning the ball well. Valencia with some blistering pace, and it was a near-post cross to Lukaku, which he squeezed in, uh, well, as you can see there, that made it 2-2. And honestly, at 2-2, I was panicking. I was thinking, oh my gosh, what's gone wrong? Deli Ali ended up gashing his leg. It just wasn't looking like our day. You can see, looking at the stats, we were the better team in this game. We dominated possession. We had a lot more chances. And, uh, well, fortunately, we made a few of the half chances pay. And as you'll see here, the winner scored by Son Hyung Min, the South Korean player. A really nice ball through to him, actually. And it was quite an intelligent run by him. Janssen, the sub, getting an assist to go alongside that opening goal of the game that he got. And, uh, well, all three points were ours. So that was absolutely fantastic. Our next game was against Bournemouth at home. It was a unconvincing 2-1 win, but we did get the win. And it was Harry Kane and Sado Berahino with the goals in this match. Uh, a good performance again by Berahino, a player who I feel like he's got a little bit of a point to prove. £30 million, unfortunately, not going to be available for this game due to injury. But so far, two goals in four appearances. It's not been too bad for him. And of course, to see Harry Kane get another goal was good. Uh, it is perhaps worth noting that in the two previous games I've already talked about, Harry Kane was unavailable. He had an injury, a groin strain, out for three weeks. As you can see, Harry Kane, not a particularly injury-prone player, but he's had two injuries already during our tenure here at the club. And, uh, well, we're going to be relying on him to come back into the team today because of Berahino's injury. Anyway, the final game uh, that we played since the last episode was our opening Champions League game. A massive tie for us. 
And uh, going into this game, I wanted to get a win. Uh, in our Champions League group, you can see here we are in Group A alongside Juventus, FC Porto and Bate Borisov, the Belarusian side. Uh, really, I think Juventus are going to be favourites to win this group. I feel like we should be able to give them a good game, however. Bait, I expect to be the whipping boys as such. And as a result, I was really having high expectations and high demands uh, of the team going into the Porto game. And as you can see... That kind of expectation really wasn't met. It was an away from home game which perhaps made it a little bit tougher. But ultimately a very late goal absolutely crushed hearts and dreams. It was a, a last minute goal. Uh, you can see here we actually had a sending off. Moussa Dembele um, getting sent off. He actually did a professional foul. However Porto missed the penalty and I kind of thought we were going to get lucky. I thought you know they've missed a penalty in the 85th minute. It's the 91st minute. Nothing can go wrong now. Oh boy, I was wrong. Varela with a fantastic assist. Loris perhaps should do a little bit better. The ball found its way into the back of the net, however, and, uh, well, 1-0 was how it finished for FC Porto. So that really wasn't that great. Uh, but today, I'm hoping we can bounce back. We've had four days to reflect on things. It's a lunchtime kickoff here against Chelsea. I did change my camera to 3D um, to show you guys the highlights there. I did ask down in the comments what camera angle should I use. The overwhelming kind of response was 2D Classic. Now, the issue I have with 2D Classic, actually, at the moment in the beta is it isn't that smooth. I'm hoping that's something that's going to be sorted, and uh, I may be tempted to switch to 3D again. I, I'm not sure. I feel like I need to make a decision, uh, but I'm, I'm terrible at making decisions, so I'm just going to sit and kind of procrastinate a little bit. Anyway, in terms of our team for today's game, we are still very much playing the same 4-2-3-1 system that you guys saw earlier on. Uh, we have, of course, got to make some changes here and there. In terms of the team, um, my assistant really likes to play Ericsson in the middle as an attacking midfielder with Sun out on the left as the advanced playmaker. And that is a system I played against FC Porto just because of the injuries to Sperahino uh, and also just to help rotate the side a little bit. Um, but I am going to be kind of not uh, not acknowledging that kind of advice today. We are going to be playing uh, the 4 2 3 1. The way I like to play it with Deli Ali down the middle, off Kane, and then Lamela and Eriksson either side. On the bench, Kyle Walker is going to be suspended, so he's not going to be an option for us today. Uh, Wanyama, therefore, will come into the fray. Um, one player I made as a signing, actually, who is yet to make an appearance, and he may well not play, but I needed just a bit of strength in case. Uh, I decided to go and pick up Angel Correa from Atletico Madrid. So a good little signing here from Atletico. Uh, in on loan, 21 years old, obviously Argentine international. He offers us a little bit of kind of creativity, a little bit of unpredictability, and uh, I think he's going to be a useful player to have. And to be honest, I feel like we're going to put him on the bench for today's game and uh, potentially give him a bit of a run out depending on how things go. Uh, the reasons really for signing him were that his wage demands were relatively low, a loan of deal, of course, relatively inexpensive too. And he is a good player going forward, a very good playmaker, very good. Can also play out on the left-hand side, so if we do get a few injuries, he can slot in there. And as you can see, looking at his attributes here, he's also pretty darn well suited to play as an inside forward out on the left-hand side. So he just adds to a little bit of the kind of unpredictability, which I like in our final third. You know, we have a, a number of ways we can kind of set up, and he's going to add a few more options there. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to get into really before this game against Chelsea. Uh, in terms of team training, I had a few people ask about this on Twitter, how I like to do things. When I first take over a club, I will generally start on tactical high during pre-season, unless I'm going to make a load of signings, in which case team cohesion is probably the way to go. But once I get stuck into a campaign such as this one, uh, where I'm going to be playing regular midweek football, as you can see here, we've got the EFL Cup next midweek, and then the week after that we have Juventus, so really we've got five games in the next two weeks. Uh, I feel like training on fitness as a whole with the team can be pretty nice, particularly if you're not too fond of rotating your team. And whilst we certainly have strength in depth, I am very much a fan of playing my strongest 11 whenever possible. So anyway, this is the team that we're going to play. We've definitely got options, particularly in the final third. Wanyama, of course, capable of coming in and being a defensive rock for us too. And uh, it's going to be a tricky game against Chelsea. It's at home. We, of course, go into this game with fine, fine form. Uh, I kind of alluded to it earlier, the fact West Ham not doing so well. The other team's propping up the table right now. Stoke, Middlesbrough, Hull. And then you'll notice Arsenal and Chelsea right down at the bottom. Chelsea yet to win a game this season. They've got draws against Watford, Swansea and Burnley, and they've lost to Leicester. Really for them, they're going to be hoping to win this game and hoping to bounce back big time. And, uh, well, it's going to be up to us to hopefully shut them out today. So anyway, we're going to submit our team for today's game. Uh, in terms of the system, as I said, I've not done much tinkering yet. I'm sure over the next kind of 10 games or so, once I get a better grip on my system, how it's playing, uh, there'll probably be a few, you know, perhaps player instruction changes, a few roles might change, players who currently play in the positions you can see them in may well change. 
But I don't want to make any rash decisions. Um, obviously, we had a bit of a disappointing result against Porto, but with the exception of that, it's four games unbeaten in the league. Uh, and well, four games won on the bounce as well. We find ourselves in third. And so there is not a lot of point, at least in my opinion, uh, of changing too much. Anyway, I've been asked about Wanyama being left out. Is that due to his recent injuries? It kind of is. Uh, to be honest, Wanyama is a player who I didn't think I'd play that much initially when I took over. I thought he'd be kind of the backup defensive midfielder. But as a ball-winning midfielder, he is absolutely incredible. So you can definitely expect to start, perhaps see him uh, start to play as a kind of ball-winning midfielder for us in the next few games, particularly once he gets a little bit of match fitness. But for today, um, he's going to be on the bench. Either way, it's of course a derby here against our London rivals. Um, I'm going to try and answer this. I can't multitask though, um, so we'll, we'll go with those answers. Those answers seem good. In terms of the Chelsea side, looking at it here, they're going to play the 4-1-2-2-1 or 4-3-3 as I like to call it. Um, but certainly the 4-1-2-3 system that actually uh, City played against us in the first live com. It kind of countered our system a little bit. So that's perhaps something to keep a, an eye on. We might have to change our system. Uh, looking at the team as a whole, though, it's a pretty intimidating lineup. And it's worth noting that Icardi starts for them. They've signed him this year. They spent £24 million for him. Didn't have the greatest of debuts, but they've got firepower on the bench with both Diego Costa and... Um, I can never say this guy's name, Batshuawi. That, that's definitely not how you say it, so please answer on a postcard if you do know how to say it. Um, but looking at their team as a whole, it's a good team. Uh, particularly in the final third, they've got some players who are very, very capable, who we are going to have to be wary of. But at the same time, we're in good form. I want to see the players kind of bounce back uh, following that game against Porto, which was incredibly disappointing. And, uh, well, we are lacking perhaps a little bit of fitness, but Chelsea... Uh, of course, fortunate in the sense they've not got Champions League football to contend with this year. So they should be relatively fit. So perhaps the edge goes slightly to Chelsea going into this game, despite the fact we are, of course, the team at home. So yeah, we are going to be playing on 2D Classic. For the goal replays, I've put it on behind goal low. I might change it to the close camera. Let me know again. I feel like this year, you know, it's a new football manager. There's no loads of new 3D options. And Vertonghen, he had options. And he did that. Mosca, not Mosca, Oscar with the goal. If you don't know, Mosca is a player from my save last year uh, with a Gibraltarian side. That kind of slipped out, didn't it? Either way, let's see how we get on uh, in this game. We need to bounce back. 30 seconds gone. I mean, we get to see that mistake nice and up close here, don't we, by the tongue. And a shocking back pass. And Oscar just kind of latches onto it. And, well... This is a Chelsea side who haven't won a game yet this year. I want to do some damage against them. I want us to go out there and prove a point. And it's fair to say that so far in this game, we've not really done that. Danilo, number 13, a player worth keeping an eye on. Of course, our new right back sent off on his debut, looking for a better performance from him today. Uh, I had a few people ask in the first episode about squad numbers. Kane, please score. He does score. Harry Kane, we fight back immediately. It's our first shot of the game. It's our first goal as well. And we move top of the league. But no, what I was going to say was, I had a few people mention on the last episode about squad numbers. I'm going to hold my hands up. I'm guilty of this. I like to hit the auto number button. I don't really care about squad numbers that much in football. And so people were getting triggered by the fact that Harry Kane, as you could see there, was wearing number 22. People don't like that, apparently. I'm sorry to Spurs fans who find it offensive. I just, I just don't care about numbers in FM, really. Football managers should um, change the algorithm for how auto number works so they're given their actual numbers in real life. If we want that to be a thing, I mean, because I'm, I'm too lazy to go and research and make sure everyone's numbered properly. But anyway, we're on the attack again here, although Cahill breaks down the play. Chelsea looking for that counter, of course. They've got Oscar, William and uh, Icardi up top. Very pacey players. We are going to have to be wary of that. We've been caught on the counter against Porto, but we are on the attack here. Harry Kane, I don't know what Courtois is doing there. I assume it's Courtois in goal for them, but it was very questionable goalkeeping. Harry Kane scores again. He's got two more. Someone mentioned last episode, he got two goals against City, of course, in August. And Harry Kane, if you know, or if you don't know, he, he doesn't score in August or September. He's got four goals so far for us in two live comms against massive teams. And, uh, well, that was a really nice finish by him too. Courtois in goal, definitely questionable, however. We're on the attack again here. Dembele, options on ahead, cutting inside. Eriksen hits it from range. What a goal that is. Goals galore here. It's 3-1. I kind of want four. It's been a, a mad start to this game. We've taken a lot of the chances that came our way. And, well, the home crowd are in raptures. Dembele here, cutting inside, lays it off to Eriksen. First time, smashes it in off the post. 
What an angle that is to kind of see that goal flying. Christian Eriksen absolutely loved that one. Not the first kind of really nice goal he scored this year. He got that goal um, against Everton. It was the second of the game in uh, that match. And he's got another one for us there. Another one for the Eriksen scrapbook. And he's on the ball. Speaking of the devil, Harry Kane looked offside. I don't think he is, though. Lays it back to Eriksen. Perhaps a man on the overlap. Can't get it away. Ivanovic wins the ball with Cahill now. Can we apply pressure? We can't. Icardi clean through. Loris, though. What a save by the Frenchman. Stands tall. Doesn't let the ball pass him. And he's uh, well. He's made it a crucial save for us there to really uh, maintain that two-goal margin that we have. Can we now counter... We've got a few men perhaps on the break. Unfortunately, not going to amount to anything. But so far, I, th I think it's fair to say so good. I'm quite happy. Although Icardi, he's through now. He's, he's hit the side netting. It's a good chance for him. He had no options in the middle, so he had to go alone. And, well, you'd have to say, despite Chelsea's kind of amount of chances, we're the team with the goals. And we might have another one here. Dyer back post. It's cleared away. Harry Kane with the first half hat trick. What the hell is happening? It's his sixth goal of the season. Chelsea... They're in trouble. They've not won a game yet this season and they might not win another one here despite our best efforts to give them a leg up in this game with that 30-second goal. Um, we've bounced back well and Harry Kane, he slots it away. John Terry, he, he just can't keep up. It's a bit of English-on-English -English action in the centre uh, of the pitch there. And, uh, well, I think it's fair to say John Terry, he's not got Harry Kane in his pocket. If anything, Harry Kane has John Terry in his pocket. It's been that kind of first half. That was a half chance for them there, actually. It was given as a clear-cut chance. It was Oscar, I think, out on the right side with the, the long-range effort. Unfortunately, dealt with. But now, unfortunately for us, Moussin Debele decides to lose his temper. And he got sent off in F against FC Porto midweek. He's now given away a penalty. And again, we perhaps give Chelsea a lifeline into this game. Three-goal margin is comfortable. Two-goal margin, still with a half a football left to play. A little bit less comfortable. Icardi slots it home, gets his... Um, First goal of the season. It's his first goal for Chelsea as well from the penalty spot. And, uh, well, Chelsea perhaps with a lifeline being thrown in their direction. Two goals we've conceded, both very much of our own doing. And, uh, well, if it wasn't for the efforts, I guess, going forward, we'd be in a little bit more trouble than we are right now. Anyway, William out on the left-hand side. Might be another chance here before half-time. Mad, mad kind of first half so far. William. I mean, it's ambitious, isn't it, by the Brazilian there? Unfortunately, he skews it well wide to the despair of the Chelsea fans, but we don't mind that one little bit. Either way, great first half, 4-2 up. I want to say I couldn't ask for anything more. If I could ask for anything more, it'd be not to give away a penalty. It's worth noting, Deli Ali not having a great game again at centre attacking mid. He has struggled so far this season as an attacking midfielder on support. Part of me thinks maybe I should try him as a deeper play, you know, maybe play him as the deep line playmaker on defend, or maybe even try and kind of integrate a roaming playmaker into our system because he could well play there. But maybe that's just a little bit of food for thought. Right now, though, uh, I can't really think about that too much because we've got a game uh, to focus on. And to be honest, it's, it's been a great first half. Harry Kane with a hat trick, Ericsson with a goal too. We've looked very potent going forward. We do need to definitely tighten up defensively. Um, but, well, going into the second half, we are the team very much on top in this game. Statistically, it's been very close. It's really been just the clinicalness of our strikers uh, and really kind of them providing a clinic of how to finish, uh, which sees us ahead in this game. We've got a set piece. Eric Dyer, the man trying to latch onto it. Oscar clears it only as far as Dembele, who gave away the penalty. He's got some redeeming to do. Eriksen now being driven away from the goal, but nice bit of build-up play here. Deli Ali, can he make amends? Can he finish it? He can't. He hits it straight at Courtois. And, uh, well, that is a little bit disappointing, isn't it? A chance on the hour mark uh, to really kind of hopefully steal the deal. I feel like if we can get a fifth goal now, it's probably game over. Unfortunately there, we've squandered a very, very good opportunity. 20 minutes left, Deli Ali struggling a little bit. I'm going to give Ongel Korea his debut here. It's going to be uh, a short debut, really, at 20 minutes, but his match uh, fitness just isn't that great yet in terms of his sharpness, 59%. He's going to need a little bit more football. Uh, Lamela's done okay, as has our entire midfield, really. I'm going to take off Ericsson and bring in Wanyama. Again, similar reason to Korea. Needs a little bit of match sharpness. Give him 20 minutes here. He's a very good player defensively. I've talked about the fact Wanyama may well be a player who comes in and uh, starts more regularly in that kind of ball-winning midfielder role within our 4-2-3-1 system. And uh, we're going to give him a little bit of time to shine here. 
Either way, it's actually Chelsea coming forward. Ten minutes left. The game isn't over if they can get a goal in the next five or so minutes. You'd feel like there'd be a bit of pressure and a bit of squeaky bum time commencing. Wanyama, though, fantastic tackle there. Eriksen plays up to Angel Correa, who lays it off to Wanyama. Number 23, of course, the new man on the block, looking to have an immediate impact if he can. Holding on to the ball nicely here, unfortunately, the through ball to Kane intercepted. Nice idea, though, by our team, and now it's Chelsea bringing the ball forward. Danny Rose, though, great tackle by him. Up to Correa, who lays it off to Harry Kane, who, of course, would be looking for a fourth goal. Lamela now, there's options on the overlap. Harry Kane doesn't need options, though. He makes it 5-2. It's his seventh goal of the season, and it's been a masterclass by Harry Kane. Four goals, count them. Fantastic. Lamela, really nice ball through here. Harry Kane running off his man well. Cahill this time in his pocket. Appealing for the offside. It wasn't given. And while we've scored five goals at home against Chelsea, really couldn't ask for anything more than that. Defensively, we, yes, we've been questionable. And on another day, perhaps we would have been punished more if we'd given away a penalty in that short back pass. But really, in this game, we, we've shown our class going forward. Harry Kane has been incredible for us. And um, I've never really had a chance to use Harry Kane in Football Manager, so I'm already enjoying this. I'm hoping maybe he can get a fifth. Is that greedy to want a fifth? Perhaps. Chelsea with possession. We've got the ball, though, and it's Harry Kane again. Lays it off to Lamelu, who's cutting inside. Options in the middle. Can he pull it across? He doesn't. To be fair, I don't think the pass was on. Uh, defenders did well to get across there, and unfortunately, Lamela skews the shot wide. But, um, wow, what a performance this has been. We've got one more change we can make. I'm going to just bring on... I'm going to bring on Vimmer for Arda Weireld. Vimmer yet to make an appearance, I, I think, this season. We'll give him two minutes to run out the centre-back. It's not exactly going to be a classic performance by him, but it's a little bit of game time, and hopefully, if he was considering complaining about it, he's now reconsidering. Either way, Diego Costa scores. Maybe I shouldn't have brought on Wimmer. 20 seconds left, though. In fact, less than that. There's no chance of Chelsea getting back into this game. The fact we've conceded three, a little bit concerning. Fortunately for us, though, Kane's bailed us out. Diego Costa, big header at the back post. Lloris can't quite get across. And, uh, well, Chelsea, they've scored three. They've not won. I don't think many people would have predicted that to have happened at the start of this match. Um, but that is the way it's played out. And, well, we are going to be top of the league, I do believe, due to the fact we are playing the earlier of the Saturday kickoffs. What a game that is. 5-3 the score. A very, very convincing performance, really. The game for a large portion of the game kind of was in our control. And, uh, yeah, we can't fault the players one little bit there. We go top of the league, 13 goals scored in five games, seven goals conceded in five, perhaps a little bit of uh, food for thought there. But Harry Kane, the man of the moment, scoring four against Chelsea at White Hart Lane. What a performance by the young English striker. Hopefully we can have more of that over the coming games. Anyway, guys, in terms of when we'll be back for the next episode, I think we're going to do a live com against Juventus in the Champions League. It's only three games away, so it's not... To in the too distant future but I think that could be a pretty important game for us particularly given the fact we lost to Porto in the opening game looking slightly further ahead than that we've got games against Manchester United and Liverpool coming up we've also got rep uh, a revenge game against FC Porto and Arsenal to play so a big chunk of games there perhaps let me know down in the comments which of those matches you'd be most interested in seeing maybe we could do a double header or something around that time because those could well be uh, incredibly important matches for us but anyway, guys, that is all from me today. As always, if you have enjoyed today's episode, smash the like button. Thank you so much, as I said, right at the start for your overwhelmingly positive support on the opening episode of this series. If you want to check down in the description, there'll be a playlist, of course, of this series if you're watching in the not-too-distant future. And uh, yeah, that is all from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.